Hello, and welcome to World Card Making Day. I'm Sarah Douglas, CEO of Stampin' Up, and we're so happy you're here. We'll be tapping into some of your innate creativity and making cards we hope you'll be excited to send. We have so much in store. If you're new to Stampin' Up, I'd love to share a little bit about who we are. Yes, we're a stamping, paper crafting, and scrapbooking company. We design, develop, and even manufacture amazing crafting supplies. But we're about so much more than that. Our goal is to make a positive difference in people's lives. Your life, in some small way. Now that might be through creative inspiration, crafting time with friends, or the happiness that comes from sending or receiving a handmade card and knowing someone was thinking about you. After all, a card is a hug with a fold in the middle. Today, we invite you to be part of our community and experience for yourself the joys of creativity. You can also contact one of our Stampin' Up! demonstrators anytime. They would love to show you the Stampin' Up! offering, connect you with other crafters, and help you develop your paper crafting skills. So, what can you expect during this World Card Making Day? First, we'll get crafting with some products called Mix and Match, which we shared with you in communications prior to this event. These quick and easy projects will show you how quickly a card can come together. After that, Vanessa, one of our product designers, will share some background around the Mix and Match products, as well as introduce additional products that you can use to enhance your crafting experience. And last but not least, some of our kit experts, employees and demonstrators alike, will be sharing information about Stampin' Up's all-inclusive crafting projects. These kits are a great way to get started, and we'll show you why. This is going to be an awesome event, so be sure to share the projects you create or how and where you're watching the event on social media using SU World Card Making Day 2024 hashtag. The first step of any crafting experience is to make sure you have the supplies you need. So we're going to pause for a moment so you can gather your mix and match products, adhesive and scissors. This line of products was introduced earlier this year and is a great way to get started with paper crafting. The mix and match product line offers pre-cut, pre-scored cards and envelopes, as well as an assortment of image packs, which we call ephemera packs, that are designed and pre-cut. The best part is that all of the components are designed to work together, giving you a head start and saving time. I also love how these products require minimal storage space and allow you to be creative and customize your card with just some adhesive and scissors. This is really all you need. If you haven't opened your product already, 
Let's do that together. Okay, let's take a look at these envelopes and note cards. They do coordinate. They're not exactly the same pattern, which I love. And who doesn't like a fun envelope to get in the mail, right? Happy mail for sure. So we can coordinate or mix and match our envelopes, actually. That might be kind of fun. Okay, we'll set those aside. And then let's take a look at our ephemera packs so we know what images we're working with. This one is a floral pack. So images only, that's helpful. I like this ephemera pack because of course florals are all around great for card making, but I like that you've got options with color and black and white. So if you don't like the color combinations in some of the florals, then you can do something different with the black and white ones. So when I get my ephemera packs and open them, I start punching everything out usually and put them in separate piles so that I can work with them. I won't do that today. <laughs> I'm not gonna make that big of a mess, um, but I love, love, love this floral package. Um, and you can mix and match to your heart's content. So image only on this one. Let's take a look at some of our sentiments. This is the saying something ephemera pack. So here are all of your greetings, all of the words that you need. So, and two of each design. So we've got doubles back here. And I love the scripty words. For all occasions, hello, happy birthday, you're awesome. We'll be using some of those today. Should be fun, set those here. And last but not least, we've got another image pack. This is the something for everything mix and match pack. Oh, cute. We're going to use this little guy. Such different styles in this pack. You've got some line art, you've got some bold pieces, you've got some frames. This one I think is the most eclectic of the packs. Now here's a little tip. I actually save the packaging for my ephemera packs because they give little tips right here. So this is the something for everything label. But you also see this small print right here that lists the colors. So if I'm using this with my other Stampin' Up! products, then I know which colors um, were designed in these packs, which I find really helpful. So don't overlook the packaging, <laughs> at least is my tip. Okay, I think we're ready to get started. We've got everything laid out. We've got our adhesive scissors or snips if we will need them later. Let's dive into card number one. This is the first card we're going to be making, and I'm just going to leave it on the table so that we have a point of reference. That's gonna be helpful for you and helpful for me. So I'm going to put all of these ephemera packs aside because we're going to be grabbing images from them. You can do the same. You might have more space at home than I do, so spread out all of your stuff, and we'll grab this blue or midnight. Misty moonlight, I guess is probably what it is. Misty moonlight card the grid and I've just folded mine in half now I want to pull the pieces together and I've just got five components so I've got to find all of the words now if you're in a different uh, market you'll have a translated version so I want to point that out as well and I'll set that here so that you can pull the greetings that work for your language so I've got to find the oh hey right here This is a really fun card because it's a love you, happy birthday. It's got some fun little furry friends on there, which I like. So we've got the oh hey, we've got where our little furry friends. That's more in this eclectic pack down here, the one I was talking about. Got our little guy here, got our love you. On this sheet.
and you can see that the colors coordinate. It doesn't have to be matchy matchy, which I like, but you've got a little coordination here for our little, little kitty cat at the top. There he is. Okay, and then it's your birthday. So we've gone through a few in the greetings. So these are the components for card number one. Okay, so we've got our card base and then our other layers with the mix and match ephemera packs. Now, whatever adhesive you have is going to work. I like to use the multi-purpose glue, the um, liquid glue, because it's got a fine tip. So there's a wider tip on the bottom and then there's the fine tip on the top. And some of these pieces are a little bit more fine. Now, depending on how you want to lay out your card, you can set each of the pieces on or you can start with an anchor point. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with it's your birthday so that I can line it up on one of these lines and that will kind of give me an anchor for the card. So we'll just use a little bit of that glue. And it's not quite center, but anywhere you put it is going to be fine. And if you don't get it perfect, no problem. Okay. All right, so now that we've got our anchor point, then we can go in and put all of our little pieces on. So I'm gonna start anchoring from corner to corner. That's just my method. Comes together pretty quickly and easily. This is gonna be a great birthday card for my kids. My girls are dog girls actually. And so, but they love their furry friends. So how many of you know someone that's got a furry friend that would appreciate this card for their birthday? So I'm just gonna overlap this corner a little bit. And then that will give me space for my words here and here. So you don't have to put glue on the whole thing, but maybe just some anchors. So I've got some on the Y, just little tiny dots the H, just so that I get the outside layers down. And it doesn't take much, I'll tell you that. Okay, concentrating, I'm concentrating on my adhesive. <laughs> How about you? Are you concentrating as well? Pretty simple and straightforward though. If you're worried about the adhesive, go ahead and keep a wet paper towel on hand, or if you're like me, just wipe it on your pants, it's all good. <laughs> so just five components with the card base and you have a card that's ready to go. My question for you will be, will you do a matching envelope or will you mix it up? I may mix mine up and choose another pattern. That was a little bit more than I wanted. You know what this reminds me of? Do you remember being in school and you had that liquid glue and you'd put it on your hand? and then you'd peel it off. That's what this reminds me of. We're gonna get sticky. This is the sign of a good crafter. So if you're sticky like me, not a problem. Okay, look at how amazing that card is and how quickly it came together. Card number one, check, we're finished. And it's beautiful and ready to go. Like I said, we're gonna pick an envelope to go with it. I actually think I'm going to mix and match this one and put it with a floral. Now, a li another little tip, I like to keep my cards in the envelope, but I wanna be able to see what the card is. And so I will file my cards and keep them in a pile like this so that they're attached to the envelope that they go with and they're ready for me to grab and go whenever I feel the need for a card. So card number one, done, check, woohoo, party party. Are you ready for card number two? This is the card we're going to be making next. And what better than a thinking of you card? I'll set this here on the front so that you have it as a point of reference. I'm going to need it as a point of reference as well. Okay, our card base is going to be this piece. I like the cross hatch on there. It's really subtle, kind of elegant, actually. Okay, we'll set that here. And then we need um, one, two, three, four different components. So we're going to start with our words and we'll do the thinking of you. Now, if you are 
in a different market, this is the word, this is the sheet that you're going to be pulling or the greeting you're going to be pulling. Okay. So I'm thinking of you, then I need to find my wreath. I've got a butterfly. By the time this is all over, all of your pieces are going to be everywhere. It's going to be amazing. Okay, we've got our banner. Grab a dish or a little container to hold everything. Okay, one, two, three, four. We're set. This is what we need for card number two. Okay, again, they go together really, really quickly and you can just layer. This is more of a collage technique. So I'm gonna build my card from the bottom up this time. Okay, so I've got my wreath. That's gonna be the base of the card. Like I said, my, my anchor point. And I'm just going to put it right in the center. And you can kind of squidge it around if you need to. Okay, we'll add are thinking of you kind of off to the side, another anchor point to guide all of our other images. I send a lot of thinking of you cards because sometimes I'm thinking of someone and I wanna grab a card right then. So these are the kinds of cards I feel like I need to have on hand. Maybe you feel the same way. Okay, so here's our little butterfly. We're not gonna do this little guy yet. We've gotta put our banner piece underneath it. So this is just gonna go from the middle up to that corner. That's how I'm doing this one, kind of like that. So we can lay your piece there and see where it's gonna go. And we'll just add a little dot to each of the pendants. And then, does not have to be perfect. That's why we're collaging. We're just layering, layer all the pieces you want. Okay, so we've got our little banner here, a little thinking of you, and then our little butterfly. Now this one's kind of fun because you can just put adhesive down the center and kind of curve the wings out so that they pop a little bit more off the card. Of course, you're gonna put it in an envelope, but they'll still be that way when you open it. Little glue there, doesn't take much. And I'm just gonna attach it right here. Now your card might look different. I mean, they're not gonna be exactly the same, but you get the general layout. Find your anchor point, add your greeting, and some accessories. That's at least how I'm layering my card from the bottom up. That's card number two, and don't forget your envelope. I've decided to mix and match mine, but you can match it to the card. I think I'll pull in this, kind of bring out the color of the banner. I'm put my card in my envelope so that it's ready for when I'm thinking of someone can send that card. All right, are we ready for the next card? This is the next card we're going to make. Who doesn't need a really good luck card that's bright and cheery? Um, I like this one. This is one of the cards that I'll use for kind of the everyday things. So we'll pull in our card base and take a look at the components we need. So four components. We've got our greeting, the good luck that we'll use. Now, if you speak a different language, here are your other options. And then it will layer just over the rainbow like you see on this card. So we've got our good luck. We need to find our rainbow. We've got our little sunshine. And then the greeting. Let's see, where did it go? There it is. Follow your heart, it knows the way. A little bit of encouragement there. Okay, really easy. We're gonna find our anchor point and build our card from the bottom up again. Now I'm going to keep in mind, I want my rainbow to be centered. So I'm not gonna put adhesive all the way to the top because my sun is behind my rainbow. Okay, so if you want to put the sun down first, then you can. I just wanted to get a good idea of where the center point of my card would be so that I know where to put the sun. Okay, just a little tip. So I'll grab my little sun. 
and put that underneath my rainbow. And then I'll be able to adhere my rainbow down exactly where I want it in the center of the card. I love how bright and cheery this is. I feel like this is like a, a good graduation card. You know, you're setting off on the rest of your life. I um, had a nephew that graduated this year. And of course my daughter graduated last year and it's such a crazy time in their lives. So this one is a card of encouragement, which I love. And I actually like thinking of the people that I'm going to send it to when I'm making it. Keep an eye, uh, someone in mind. We'll add that to the bottom. And then our good luck on the top. For whatever endeavors this person is charging ahead to find in their life. There we go. This is very fine. The good luck is a very fine script. So this one, I'm just warning you, you're going to get a little bit gluey. I'm sure you'll come up with tips and tricks for this. I'm just going to dab it with my finger so that it doesn't get gooey on my card. Are we ready to get crafty? This is the sign of good crafter. You've got some adhesive on your fingers. Okay, good luck. We're going to have that kind of angle or whatever greeting you choose and we'll tap that down and like I said there we go wipe the wipe the rest on my pants all right that's card number three now don't forget your envelope on this one too I'm going to pull in this kind of a pop of black for mine you can choose a matching envelope or do something different just like that we're ready to go you ready for the next card? It's going quick. The next card we'll be making is a celebrate card. And I love this one. It's elegant. We're using some of those florals and it's a birthday card to boot. You could change the greeting if you wanted to, if you didn't want it to be a birthday card, but we're making a birthday card today. I'll set that here so that you can see it. We'll grab our card base. And we need our ephemera pieces. So we're going to use the florals this time. But first I'm going to pull my sentiments in. We've got celebrate. And I like this pop of color. Now we'll find our happy birthday sentiment. It's a little banner piece. It's going to be beautiful. And then our florals. Let's take a look at the florals that go with this. This is like a game of I Spy or something. Gotta find all the florals. Okay, here's the one we need. This piece right here. And then there's another layer behind it. And that's right here. But of course, the beauty of mix and match is that you can choose any of these. So we've got four components to create this card and it will go together just as easily as the rest. But here's a little tip for this one. This one is kind of laid off the side of the card. That's okay. We're going to trim it at the end. So keep that in mind. That's what you're going to use your snips for or your scissors. Okay. So this time we're going to build the card from the bottom up, but I do want to kind of get an idea of where the placement is going to go, especially of this floral right here, because that's kind of what everything is anchored to. Okay. So I'll put a little bit of adhesive on this floral, the bottom side of it, so that I've got some room for that little sprig on the top. <laughs> Do you like my official names for the florals? Okay. So we'll add this part because that's going to anchor everything else to the card. The words are going to come off of that little floral and this little piece will as well. So I'm putting a little bit of glue more on this side. Strategic glue placement. Who knew that would be a thing? Okay, got this one here. We'll trim this in just a minute. Now it's time to add our sentiments. Now, if you are in a different country or speak a different language, here are the words that you're looking for. This is the way they look in other languages. I'm going to add my celebrate first. It's where we have fun with the glue. 
little bits here and there. And you probably, I'm one of those people that leaves my glue open. If you want to be better than me, then you can put the lid on your glue when you're done using it. But I like to have it ready and at hand. Okay, here we go. We'll flip this over and lay this right over the top. Kind of more to the right. I want that E to be toward the right side of the card or the end of that sentiment. Okay. And if you find you need a little bit more, like my little B is sticking up, we just add a little bit of glue there. And then of course we'll add our happy birthday. Anyone have a birthday coming up? I can think of some friends that have a birthday coming up. Family members too. There is an October birthday in my family, so this will be the card for me. Okay, now you have to trim this side. I'm just going to use the snips and just align my scissor edge along the card. So I'm not gonna cut it, it's just gonna be my guide, okay? I love snips. These are super sharp and small enough to get all the details the way I want them. So if you don't have a good pair of snips, might be a good idea to get some. Okay, so there is our card and I'm going to add this one. Maybe I'll do matchy matchy on this one. Pull in our envelope that coordinates. And we're ready to go. All right, one more to go. Are you ready? This is the next card we're going to be making. Wishing you all the best. So this is good, good vibes with this card. I'll set it here so you can take a look at the components that we're going to need. We've got the last card base that we're going to use and we have a bunch of florals. Now I love this one because we're using the black and white florals and we're not even gonna color them in. They're beautiful as they are, but you always have the option, which is great. Okay, there's our big floral right here. Then we've got some greenery. There we go. And we've got a couple of these. So you do have two each of the die cut sheets and you'll need both of those. So both of the images like this, we're gonna put one on one side and one on the other. So we'll need these two. We've got our florals. And then we're going to use the wishing you all the best right here. Again, if English is not your first language, we have options for you. Here are the sentiments you're looking for. Okay, we've got our components, one, two, three, four, and we're ready to put it together. Now, like I said, we're gonna bleed off the right side, so get an idea of where you want your anchor points to be. Mm, I kind of like it like that, because we're gonna cut off the end just like we did on the other side of the, of the card that we previously designed. And then we'll kind of put in our florals. I just wanna get a good idea. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put adhesive right here on this floral and not around the top yet so that I can tuck my greenery behind. This is my anchor point, even though it is not the lower layer. Okay, so that will be enough to anchor the card. Just like this. Make sure it's good and set because it does tend to move around, which is great because then you can align it the way you want to. And then we'll add our greenery around the outside and then secure the floral. It's kind of so fun making cards. I love happy mail. I don't know about you, but I like to get cards in the mail. It's way better than all the other things I get in the mail. And I also like to um, know that someone's thinking about me. And I think about that too when I'm sending the card, right? because we're thinking about the people that matter to us the most. Again, your card may look different than mine. That's totally okay. That's what creativity is. So have fun with your elements on the card. 
And if you're crafting with friends, I hope you're having a great time. Right over the top. Now I will go back and add a little bit of adhesive here. You might not need to, but that way I just know my florals are gonna stay where they're supposed to be. And then tack those edges down. Okay, now we'll flip that card over and do the same thing on the other side. Now you could choose to cut it like this. I feel like I need a little bit more to guide my scissors, so I am folding the edge over to guide my snips down this edge of the card. Look how fast and quick and easy it is to make cards with our mix and match products. Of course, don't forget your envelope. We're gonna go eclectic on this one. But you really can't go wrong when you're using the note cards and the ephemera packs. So look at these amazing cards all together. Let me clean up my space. Maybe you can clean up yours as well and take a look at the five cards that you have made. Let's take a look at the finished products. <laughs> Think about who you're gonna send these to. Because I have to say, the, sen the sentiments that you put on the inside, the, the, the love that you send matters to the person that you're sending it to. So take a look at these beautiful cards. Do you have a favorite? Hmm. I think my favorite might be this one. I love the celebrate and happy birthday. And I know exactly who this card is going to. It's been so fun crafting with you, but we have more. So let's invite one of our product designers, Vanessa, to give us a little background on this product and show us what else we can do with all of these extra pieces. Well, some of the extra pieces we have. Enjoy. Thanks, Sarah. I'm Vanessa, and I'm a product designer and illustrator here at Stampin' Up. I've been here for about seven years, and I got into designing and illustrating because I really loved crafting. Um, I love all the things that are involved in it, the stickers, the fun ephemera that you can play with, and the pattern papers, and all that fun stuff. So that's how I ended up being an illustrator. Um, when I'm designing the mix and match, stacks, I like to think about all the different things that you might want to make cards for, those different events in your life, like celebrating milestones and achievements, saying that you miss someone or how special they are to you, and that you want to say thank you, and of course, birthdays. So coming up with uh, the mix and match pack, I had to think about how I wanted to make it eclectic and fun and a little different, but also go together really well. So I landed on three different drawing styles that I wanted to highlight in this. So I did a lot of solid images that have a little bit of line art, a little bit of detail in them, and then solid images with color and shading in it that was in like a complementary color that would go really nicely. And then black and line art that's always fun for coloring and using coloring tools. So the color palette I chose was a little bit of a non-traditional rainbow something kind of fun and fresh and different. Um, and then I had to go think about what kind of icons you would want for all these different events in your life, things that would appeal to lots of people. So I made a huge list of, you know, party hats and animals and pets and plants and all that fun stuff. And I made little sketches of little doodles of all my things that I was thinking of. And one of the things I did with this mix and match was I figured out early how I wanted them all to lay up on a sheet so that you could get as many elements as possible. And I puzzled them together on um, one sheet. And this is a little, I want to show you a little bit of how I did that and what I, what I came up with. So here's an example of the sketches I did, all the different elements I was using. 
So I wanted to draw some fun like balloons and hearts and cakes and butterflies and dog and fun things um, and rainbow and just sketch it all out so it would fit together on one sheet. And as you can see, this is kind of how it came together in the end. And um, very similar, but had to change out some elements just to make it work um, nicely and make it all in the pretty Stampin' Up! colors. So I did this all digitally then on the computer when I after I sketched with like pencils and just pencil and paper. So, and here I'll show you another one. This one is really fun with like lots of sailboats and fish and all the different scene building you can do if you're saying miss someone or um, just some summer icons even. So lots of fun elements. And this is what the final sheet looked like. And you can see I changed out the bird a little bit, made him a little more realistic and nice line art where you can color him. Um, but fun little tassel banner. So that's some of that one. And then this is actually probably one of my favorite sheets. Uh, has some fun scene building, like a nice background and mountains and a sun and little frame, a little cowboy you can make a little cute scene with and some coffee cups and different things. So sketched that all out and changed out a few of the elements like this crab um, for some stars and lemons and different elements. And yeah, that's that one. And I'm gonna show you a flower one too. So I went ahead and sketched uh, some big, nice florals that I thought would work nicely on a big card front and uh, just did, did those sketches. And then this is how it sort of ended up pretty much my sketch ended up exactly like what the final sheet was and doing it in the Stampin' Up! colors and some monochromatic tones right there. So, so I want to show you a little bit more what you can do with all these pieces. There's so many pieces in this mix and match uh, collection. Altogether, there's 72 icons, 41 flowers, and 64 word pieces. So lots of mix and match options which is why it's called mix and match. So you'll just need a few more items to do these cards. Some note cards and envelopes, some Stampin' Dimensionals, a Memento ink pad, and a D block. And then you'll wanna get this stamp set that goes perfectly with the ephemera. So it's simply said, and it has all these cute sayings on it. Um, and it actually comes in two other languages, French and German. So I'm gonna show you some of these other cards that you can make. I'm gonna move these over. Yeah. So I love this card because you can just stamp right onto the note card right here. It's very simple, just a note and just two elements and you've got this Perfect little fun card to give to just about anyone. And then this fun one that has this cute little frame and all these like fun elements and a little hello from the word dies and then miss you from the stamp set. That's right there. So um, I love this card because I actually designed the flowers so that it could be a nice hero piece on one card. But in this one, you could take on a note card like three of them and just crop off the top and sides and you have this nice composition um, with just three hero card or three hero flowers now and a little hello. It's perfect for giving to anyone. And then this one right here, I love the thanks all over it. Um, it kind of makes it so it's like a patterned paper that you can make all on your own with the stamp set. So thanks and the little hay from the die cut words and a little rose from the flower elements. So perfect little thank you. And then again, the let's celebrate as a pattern, pattern paper kind of design where you're stamping the let's celebrate several times, put a little happy on there and it's great for any celebration can add the cupcake, the candle. It's a fun little card to have. So that's all the fun cards. 
I hope you enjoyed learning a bit more about some of the background behind the ephemera packs in our mix and match product line. You can do a lot with mix and match and by adding a few extra products like a stamp set and ink pad, you can do even more. I have some exciting news for you. If you're looking to add an extra stamp set to your product collection, from October 7th to October 9th, there will be a stamp sale where you can purchase any of the stamp sets included in our 2024-2025 annual catalog for 15% off. This includes the Simply Said stamp set that helped me create some of these projects. A flyer of these projects will also be provided after this event where you can reference the projects as well as be reminded of the supplies needed to create them. It's been so fun to be with you, and now I'm going to invite Jen and Cole from our kits team to share with you about the kits collection by Stampin' Up. See you. Thanks, Vanessa. My name is Jen. And I'm Cole, and we've been working on the kits collection at Stampin' Up! for a couple years. And I'm actually super excited that they asked us to talk to you a little bit about kits collection by Stampin' Up! Me too. I have a lot of enthusiasm for kits, so I want to start sharing. So here we go. First of all, people might be wondering, what are kits? Our kits provide an all-inclusive step-by-step project or group of projects. Exactly, and they offer an approachable experience with instructions so that you have a clear path to cr creative success in the form of awesome cards or projects. And all you need is what's already in the box, plus the occasional common item like scissors. Well, that sounds easy. Yeah. People might also be wondering who we've designed kits for, and the answer is everyone. Kits are a great place to start for newer crafters or anyone who may have limited time or supplies. Yeah, and we sell a variety of kits that allow anyone to find something that meets their personal needs or style and preferences. Some of our kits include stamps and ink, but for a simple experience, there's some options that don't have any stamping at all. Hmm. One of the things that I love most about our kits is that they typically have all the adhesives that you need to complete the kit, and the pieces are already cut and ready to assemble. Uh, so as a busy mom, I reach for kits a lot. Awesome. And as we plan new kits, we think about the reasons people craft and share, and that's why we offer different types of projects for different seasons and occasions. It really comes down to providing styles and projects for lots of different purposes and recipients, because we know not everyone has the same time, space, budget, or needs. So if you're asking yourself, is there a kit for that? There probably is. Yeah, I like that. Okay, on that note, Cole, I think we should show them some of the great kits that we offer. Awesome. And I'm gonna start with one of my personal favorites. It is called Christmas Wishes. This kit is loaded with special touches that will help people send handmade Christmas cards that really bring the wow. It includes a beautiful stamp set, some specialty gold envelopes, and it even has stickers for addressing the cards to your friends and loved ones. I just think it's so pretty. So this is an awesome Christmas kit that we offer, and because Christmas and winter holidays are big occasions for card making and gift giving, we try to keep a strong offering to support that season. So in addition to Christmas wishes, we have other kits like festive tags for cute gift giving and rustic Christmas countdown for a unique interactive home decor project. And we have even more holiday kits in our offering too, so be sure to check them out on stampinup.com to find something that's perfect for whatever you need for this holiday season. Yeah. I really like Rustic Christmas Countdown. I think it great makes a great home decor piece during the holidays. And we actually have more home decor kits that you can use to decorate your house. So I'm gonna show you a next kit that actually comes with frames. Let's grab that one. And it comes with these four frames and pieces to assemble these darling framed house plants. So our Happy House Plants kit I think it'd be so cute to give it as a gift or display it on your desk. Uh, one of the nice things, Cole, is that it actually has some way to hang it on the wall or it has like an easel so that you can sit it on a tabletop. Uh, this is one of my favorite home decor kits we've done. Yeah, the home decor kits have kind of been a new addition to the kits collection recently and it's been received pretty well. 
So we hope you guys like them. Um, but one thing we do really great at Stampin' Up! with our kits collection and otherwise is card kits or card making. And yeah. the Your Day to Shine kit is, is a great example of that. So that's what this here, here's what that one looks like. I'm just gonna show you the two cards that you can make. And, I, and honestly, Cole, the sentiments are great for birthdays, important moments, reaching out to a friend. Um, and with no prep work, you can get right to the crafting. Yeah, it's a beautiful card kit and we're showing you two cards, but you get multiples of these actually. Yeah. So you'd be able to make multiple of these different versions. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. And for those people who really like card making and want to have lots of cards on hand, our next kit, which is called the Card Keeper Kit, is perfect. So this um, kit, as Cole's showing it to you, I'll tell you a little bit about it. Um, not only does it come with 10 exclusive cards and envelopes, but awesome, also this awesome box with dividers. So you can organize your cards by category. Um, with this kit, you're gonna be super prepared with cards on hand for lots of different occasions. No more worrying about when someone's birthday is gonna sneak up on you and you might forget. Exactly, so, that happens to me all the time. I like wake up and I have a phone like notification. It's so-and-so's birthday. So if I have this kit, I can just go to birthday. Oh, I went to the wrong tab, birthday. And I got a couple happy birthday cards ready to go with coordinating envelopes. So I think Jen mentioned it, but this card kit comes with the box and stuff to make these types of cards. Yeah. But once you get through those cards, cause you know, I'm sure there's more than 10 birthdays <laughs> uh, coming up in your life at some point, you will, you can just put other cards in here and keep the box. It's really nice. I love it. Cool holographic. I feel like that's a kit people are just really gonna love. Yeah. So let's not forget kits to record memories. This is something I definitely need to do more of. Um, I wanted to show them our look back kit and it's all put together in a bound notebook. I love all the options for adding photos, recording important moments, look how cute this is. So I definitely see a craft night in my future. Yeah, this is awesome. I have some Polaroids like at my house hanging on a wall, but maybe they look better in this cool book. So they would, I'll have to look they at would. That. Yeah. <laughs> Preserve those memories. Yeah. Okay, so we've seen a lot of really cool kits, um, but I think we might've saved the best for last. And this kit hasn't even been released yet, but we're gonna give you a little sneak peek anyway. So it's a really unique kit. We've actually never released a kit like this in the past, and it's called the Nature's Painting Kit. Uh, it's a coloring book for everyone. It's a great way to practice coloring techniques. Um, and even cooler, it includes a water painter and eight color pencils in eight different colors. Um, the purpose of this kit is to simply enjoy experiencing and learning watercoloring, the but the pages can be used to create projects like cards once you've colored them if you're feeling adventurous. In fact, I think you may be seeing how to do just that coming up, so stick around. Awesome. I see another craft night in my future. Yeah, let's get together and color these awesome pages. <laughs> that sounds so fun. Okay, hopefully we've shown enough of our kits for everyone to appreciate all the great projects we have in our collection. But honestly, we've only scratched the surface of what the entire kits collection offers. And as we build up our selection, we're hearing that kits are just getting better and better. So need to send a card? There's a kit for that. Wrapping gifts and need a cute tag? There's a kit for that too. And to see all of our kits, log on to stampinup.com, select kits from the menu. Let's toss it to one of our awesome Stampin' Up! demonstrators to get their thoughts about our Nature's Paintings kit. Hi everyone, this is Maheshwari. I'm from Sydney, Australia. I'm being a Stampin' Up! demonstrated for nearly six years now. I want to show you guys some exciting new kit. Come on, let's go. Here is the new Nature's uh, Paintings kit. This kit comes with the watercolor booklet, which um, has 12 designs, two of each, and you can see two blank pages on the back. So I just um, created the color scotch using the eight watercolor pencils, which comes with the kit and also the water brush. So I just created the color scotch. I'm just having my pencils 
holding on the slanting position back like this and get your water painter filled with water and you can see the push button just push just get the water make sure to blend from the back side okay now write the name and the numbers that will help us to visualize the colors easily before starting our coloring okay so also the booklet which clearly uh, has what are the colors you used the water color blends the next one and the third one here so you can see all the designs as well okay so i'm just going to show the coloring of this magnolia here and i'm going to use four of the colors starting with my coastal cabana and i'm just placing my pencil without giving any pressure as a first layer so let me start here okay so just adding the first layer here very gently without adding any pressure to the flower here just a layer here okay and the next layer is the flicking technique to get a dark shade like this just flick 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 just like this okay so the next i'm just using early espresso here i'm just doing light shade here okay and the next for this tiny bits i'm just using the color which is daffodil delight and the next again on the bottom just the flicking technique just a shade and the next i'm just get, getting my water painter just i'm blending the colors from bringing all the colors inside okay so i just want to get the dark shade just blending together and if you feel like you have excess color you can just remove it so something like this do the blending again slight shade here okay so now make sure it need to dry once it dry add your next layer which is daffodil delight so just again doing the same flicking technique something like this okay again just blend all of them together here Start. so you can um, add layer again and again to get um, the shading very dark okay so as today is a card making day once you completed you can easily tear the paper out and make the card here is my finished project where i trimmed the watercolor paper and attached to the card just and finish off the card using a simple sentiment and I like to show another simple sample, just adding the color and finish off with a simple sentiment. You can see how beautiful the card looks just by adding simple water coloring and it takes the card to the next artistic level. This is an amazing kit for beginners, casual, or you are an experienced crafter as well. Once you started coloring, I can guarantee you guys, you won't stop it. Hope you guys are very exciting about this new kit coming in November. Don't forget to grab one for you guys. Now back to Sarah. Bye-bye.
What a fun world card making day. We hope you had a great time crafting along with us. Be sure to send the cards you created to a friend or loved one. That's really the most meaningful part. And a big thank you to all of the employees and demonstrators who participated today and shared the products they love. To explore even more Stampin' Up! products, go to stampinup.com and then come back on October 7th to get the stamps you're eyeing at a discount. You'll also receive a follow-up email containing a survey and coupon code you can use on your next purchase. To find more opportunities for creativity and connection, you can locate a demonstrator by going to our website. Or if you'd like to join our demonstrator community, visit stampinup.com slash join. Thanks again for being here and don't forget to share what you created using the SU World Card Making Day 2024 hashtag. Happy crafting.